But this woman was not pregnant or breastfeeding. As far as we know, her kidneys are fine. She had a BUN of 15. So we'll say no, we have no reason to suspect that she could have impaired renal function. Her weight was 51.5 kilograms. And at this point, Mycin is going to print out its recommendation. It's doing one of these garbage collects, I'm afraid, for a moment. But it refers to this recommendation as recommendation one, a three drug regimen that includes a thambutol at a dose of 1.28 grams every 24 hours for 60 days. Points out um, that the dose would need to be modified if the patient had renal failure. Also recommends INH at 513 milligrams daily and rifampin at 600 milligrams daily. Mycin then says, although I suspect that fungus may be a possible pathogen, in the absence of definitive evidence, I'll not recommend antifungal therapy at this time. The difference is that the three drugs for tuberculosis are given orally, they're relatively benign, and treatment for fungal meningitis would be uh, intravenous with uh, toxic agents, uh, and the, and the uh, infections are less immediately life-threatening, so there is time to wait for definitive diagnostic information. Mycin does point out that it's appropriate to obtain samples for fungal, tuberculosis, and viral cultures for cytology, VDRL, blood and CSF, for coxicompetent fixation, cryptococcal antigen, viral titers, uh, and possibly an infectious disease consultation should be requested. It's possible now uh, to ask for the next choice therapy. We'll not do so at this time. And now it's possible to enter the question answering module so that we can request additional uh, information regarding the decisions that were made during this consultation. So let's do that. Do you wish to continue? We'll say yes. Let's go into the question answering module or the QA module. Now we've entered this, this uh, portion of the system um, in which uh, a record of everything that happened during the case is available to the question answering routines. And we can now ask it to explain. Uh, uh, at this point, question options, I'll show you what they are. <coughs> you can ask for advice. QT is a request for examples of question types that are understood by the system. It's meant to be natural language understanding, but there are certain standard uh, sentence structures which are more likely to be understood accurately. EQ requests an explanation of a specific question. So if you wanted to understand now in retrospect the eighth question that was asked, you just do EQ space eight and it would be printed out. LP is a uh, way of printing a list of uh, attributes associated with some kind of uh, object type, such as a culture or a uh, patient or uh, a drug. PR is a way of printing out specific rules, stands for print rule. Justification means that uh, when rules are printed out, you'd like to see their justifications as well as the translation of their contents. And literature asks for literature references when rules are printed out. You get the idea for the kinds of options that are available. I don't think we'll go down the entire list. So now it's waiting for us to ask a question. Let's do so. To me, the principal question we want to know the answer to is why the system believes this might have been a tuberculosis meningitis. So let's ask that question. How do you quite sure whether or not it's going to understand a question. Let's see uh, how well it does in this case. And it seems to have understood. It says, item one is mycobacterium TB associated with meningitis. I decided to treat item one on the basis of clinical evidence only. That, in other words, no TB were seen in any cultures or smears. The rules that I used concluded about the likelihood that TB is one of the organisms which might be causing the infection. One was rule 523, the other was rule 579. So we could look at those two rules, print rule 523. 
This is a rule that applies to cultures and suspected infections and is tried in order to find out about the organisms which might be causing an infection. And as you see here, it says, this is really a definition, that if the infection which requires therapy is meningitis and you've concluded that the type of the infection is TB, then it's essentially definite that, that's, that mycobacterium TB is one of the organisms which might be causing the infection. Remember, these are rules translated from an internal representation in the language LISP. So the key issue really here is how to decide that the type of the infection was TB, because it used this kind of a definition for including a likely identity. So let's ask the question that way. Um, did you decide that the type of infection is TB? The following rules conclude about the likelihood that the type of is TB. Several, but it didn't tell us which ones were used in this case. I didn't quite understand my question. And this is typical. Uh, although um, Meissen pioneered simple question answering capabilities, often you found yourself frustrated by it slightly misunderstanding a question that was typed in free text. Problems such as this can largely be ignored in today's systems using uh, the more constrained uh, uh, posing of questions uh, that's made possible and yet simple using graphics, menus, and filling in spaces on forms. Here's another set of rules that can also conclude about TV see about those either right now. Let me show you a couple of the other capabilities. Explain question eight. There's a little garbage collection. Question eight was asked in order to find out the time since the specimen of the pending CSF culture was obtained in an effort to execute rule 92. See how you can work your way through a uh, understanding of uh, what went on during your case this way. But I'll also ask you to note that this uh, example that I've been doing, although it's been slowed down by my own uh, discussion of the case, uh, has taken uh, a considerable length of time, 30, 40 minutes, and uh, is uh, clearly too long a time to expect a physician to sit at a computer in order to get the relatively limited kinds of advice that Meissen was able to provide. Uh, uh, on the other hand, this uh, system ran on computers which uh, have been uh, vastly eclipsed uh, today by uh, much more powerful single user machines without time sharing with graphics, uh, with much more memory available, uh, and programs such as this are, are now uh, uh, able to be run much more efficiently intuitively pleasing graphical interfaces on uh, personal computers at a fraction of the cost uh, of the machines on which Meissen was originally developed. Well, I think we'll stop there. You get a feel for how Meissen worked, uh, and uh, more details probably aren't necessary, although they can be found in the various publications on the Meissen system.